So we're closing in on the final pieces of end of year content with our 2021 award show to follow shortly. But for now, we're going to get into a personal favorite of mine, my annual UFC Champions Predictions video, where I make an attempt at guessing who will be in possession of each UFC title by the time 2023 rolls around. And though I usually just try to single out the belt holder, for this year I'm also going to give a very quick mention to the new threat in each division, meaning a fighter who might not achieve UFC gold, but one who will enter title contention as a new leading figure within the weight class. So without further ado, here are my picks. Women's strawweight. To kick things off, we of course begin with the women's strawweight division. In my opinion, the single best division in women's MMA today, but one that has also seen its title passed around with some serious regularity in recent years. However, I do firmly believe that Rose Namajunas is and has been the best strawweight on the planet for a few years now. And even if she finds herself defending her title two or more times in 2022, I am going to back her to finally carve out a run of consistency atop the 115 pound division. As for the new danger to the top of the division, Amanda Lemos is riding a five fight streak of victories, I'm predicting that she will be the next rising talent to break into the top 5. Women's flyweight. Being a contender to any degree at 125 pounds is just about as undesirable a position as you'll find within the UFC right now, such is the dominance of the reigning champion Valentina Shevchenko. What's interesting about flyweight this year is that there does finally seem to be a real wealth of excellent prospects coming through, and even if I'm picking Shevchenko to retain her title through the year, because she is just too damn good, I do think that we're coming into an interesting era for this division. As far as Shevchenko is concerned, I think it's worth predicting that she will remain undisputed defeated at 125 pounds for another 18 months, with only a move back to bantamweight potentially messing with that. The new threatening figure on the rise for me has to be Erin Blanchfield. I was so impressed by her relentless performance against Miranda Maverick, who is also a major prospect in her own right, but overall look to the flyweights to make a real resurgence as a division this year. Women's bantamweight. No disrespect to Juliana Pena intended, but I do think that Amanda Nunes should be favoured to earn back her bantamweight title in their inevitable rematch. I just believe that a more zoned in Nunes will be able to avoid the same pitfalls that saw her lose in the first matchup. Of course, it's not outside of the realm of possibility that Pena is able to do the double over her rival, but I do think that a more patient performance from Amanda will be enough to make the technical differences between the two more of a difference this time around. As far as prospects are concerned, while the division is not as stacked as strawweight or even flyweight, I do like Josiane Nunes to find her way into contention before too long. She's a very dangerous finisher who, despite being very small for the weight class, should be one to watch in the second half of 2022. Women's Featherweight the featherweight division's continued existence without any rankings or a legitimate roster is indeed a strange one. I don't think that it's a stretch to say that its long-term future is directly tied to Amanda Nunes' ability to hold onto her belt, and with an eye on 2022, I'd imagine we'll only see her making the walk as a featherweight once at the very most due to her rivalry with the 135 pound champ Juliana Pena. If the UFC sign Kayla Harrison, as they seem to be set to do prior to Nunes' defeat, then I would definitely peg her as the obvious threat to the Lioness. But even if they do, I don't think she's beating the champion. Flyweight. Up next to the flyweights, a division that will have its immediate future impacted by this month's UFC 270 co-main event showdown between its champion Brandon Moreno and the former champion Davison Figueredo. Now personally, as much as I loved watching Moreno and all of his clear improvements, I'm definitely of the opinion that Figgy's weight cut hampered him majorly in that matchup. I don't know that a long-term future at flyweight is really on the cards for him, but either way, I do envision a third matchup being quite close, or at least closer than the second. That said, I'm picking Brandon Moreno to end the year as champion. While the new danger to his crown will come in the form of Mohamed Mokayev, a very, very special talent who could well be my most anticipated UFC prospect to watch this year. Maybe I'll cover him in a video in the future, but for now, he is absolutely one to keep an eye on. Bantamweight. I can't pick Jose Aldo to win bantamweight gold, I just can't. That'd be an emotionally charged prediction that just wouldn't be fair to you guys. I'd be leading you astray in doing so. In another era where the fighting genius that is Piotr Jan wasn't about to win back his title, maybe. But I just don't think that anybody at 135 pounds is gonna have a fairy tale moment anytime soon. Not Aldo, not Dillashaw, not Dominic Cruz, not Sterling, not any of them. I'm definitely backing Piotr Jan to beat Aljamain Sterling within three rounds, before then defending that newly reconquered title later in the year. Look to 2023 for a very interesting clash between the champion Jan and my new threat to the division, Adrian Yanez because to me, he looks like the most dangerous and interesting prospect on the rise at Bantamweight right now. And considering the sheer depth of the division that is saying a lot, 
Featherweight. As much as I do think that Max Holloway has a very good chance of turning up in a big way later in the year and recapturing his title, I do think that the safe money would be on sticking with Alexander Volkanovsky to retain his strap into 2023. I can certainly see a successful title defense against Chan Sung Jung, if that is the direction the UFC go in for UFC 273. And though Holloway should be given a real shot at winning in their eventual trilogy bout, for the purposes of this video, siding with Volkanovsky seems to be the best bet. Ilya Taporia is a prospect within the featherweight mix who is definitely worth keeping an eye on. He's got stellar grappling, powerful, explosive striking and overall athleticism, and his most recent win saw him spark Ryan Hall, so he has that painfully good win in his locker, like a dagger to my heart. So yeah, keep an eye on Taporia. Lightweight. Lightweight is definitely one of the tougher picks that I'm going to have to make. I could see a situation where Charles Oliveira manages to end the year on top. I could also imagine Justin Gaethje touching gold before 2022 is out. But I do think that we're getting set for a second wave of the Dagestani takeover at 155 pounds, with Islam Makachev looking set to come out of the year as king. Prospect wise, this division is just about as good as it gets in the UFC, and there were about two or three names that really could have gotten the nod. Armin Saryukian, Rafael Fazayev, and so on. But just to have something of a contrarian pick, I'm going to go for the former KSW 2 weight world champion, Mateusz Gamrot. I've been watching this guy for years as he carved out a reputation on the European scene, and I've been waiting for him to break into the top 15 at 155 pounds for what seems like far too long. Gamrot, in other words, is going very, very far, folks. Welterweight. Welterweight could well have the best champion and prospect combination of all the divisions listed here. And while there's no way that I could rule out Kamza Chimaev as a potential king of the 170 pounders, I do think that Kamaru Usman's time atop the welterweight pile will last into 2023. As far as future contenders, like many others, I also see Shavkat Rakhmanov as one of the best two or three prospects in the sport. And though it might be a bit early to suggest that he'll be in title contention before the year is out, I'd be willing to gamble on him being a far better known talent by the time his next one or two fights are out of the way. Middleweight. This could well be the most controversial pick I make on this list, and anyone who watched the 12 predictions I made for the year as a whole will know exactly what's coming. But with an eye on the middleweight division this year, I do think that Israel Adesanya's time as champion will be brought to its conclusion for now by the resurgent Robert Whittaker. And for me, this pick is more about how highly I think of Whittaker than any real shortcomings I see in Stylebender's game. I just think that many factors played against the Reaper during his first crack at Adesanya. And after watching the three victories he has earned since, I really do believe that he is ready to make a better account of himself in what should be a very closely contested rematch. As for rising threats to the 185 pound title, I don't know how far he can go within the top 10 and beyond, but Dricus Duplessis is a fighter who we should all keep an eye on this year. At the very worst, he'll be a hugely entertaining addition to the middleweight division. At best, he could well be a title threat before too long. Light heavyweight. Although I definitely see Jiri Prohashka as a fighter who has a very good shot at stealing away Glover Teixeira's title in the first half of this year, Magomed Ankalaev's time is coming. And for my money, he is the most interesting, well-rounded prospect to emerge at 205 pounds in quite some time. For this division above all others, I was pretty torn between my overall pick for champion and my new threat. And while I favor Ankalaev to be the one to end the year on top, Jamal Hill is a fighter who I can also see being right in the mix by the time 2023 comes around. On any given day, I could see Prohashka beating either of them, which obviously makes this quite strange. But if I were a betting man, picking Ankalaev would be the best course of action. So that's what I'm going to do. Heavyweight. If Cyril Gann can't get the job done, I don't see any heavyweight finding a way to get around the ridiculous punching power of Francis Ngannou. Indeed, there are some interesting prospects making their way up the rankings, but I really do think that even the great John Jones will come up short against Ngannou's immense physicality. The advantages he brings with him to the cage just have too much fight-altering potential. And looking down the heavyweight rankings, I don't see anyone right now who I can bet on to be the kryptonite to his style. I definitely like Tom Aspinall to break into the top 5 before too long, his incredibly fast hands and excellent approach to getting the finish cannot be ignored, but I don't think that he'll end up in there with the champion before 2023, based on Cyril Gann and John Jones getting the bulk of the attention in 2022. But anyway, that will just about do it for this video. If you had to pick 3 fighters that you could see as champions this year, who would they be? Do be sure to leave a comment and a like before subscribing to the channel if you haven't already so you can stay up to date with all of our latest uploads. Keep an eye on your notification bell as our awards show will be along in a couple of days. And as always, thank you for watching.